Hello and welcome to the Barnes. Today I want to take you through uh, the conversion the plans that we have for this 1968 E-Type Jaguar. Um, it's a Series 2 with a 4.2 litre engine in it. Uh, also I want to talk about the process that we use. So um, we have uh, a commitment to our customers where we uh, agree with them that we won't change the underpinnings of the car. So it is fully uh, reversible, but I'm pretty sure nobody will, once, once, they, once they've driven this and experienced it, I'm convinced that they won't, it, won't want it returned. But I think there's a worry there. People want that reassurance that they can return it. So we'll take the engine out, gearbox out, and we'll store that for the customer. There's a lot of pieces that go into the car. Electric motor, the inverter, um, the control system, we keep all a lot of the original cooling in there to cool all those components. Obviously there's a very large battery to go in there. So there's a lot of things that need to be packaged. We need to try and keep the weight increase to a minimum. It's probably going to be 80 to 100 kilos on this car. But we also want to keep the balance right, front to rear, so it drives very much like the original. Let me show you underneath the, uh, underneath the hood here. That is the 4.2 litre engine, uh, as I said, produces around about 380 newton metres of torque. Um, we're going to throw away the gearbox, so uh, obviously direct drive, no gears, it will drive like an automatic. That's why we're putting a little bit more torque into, torque into, the, into the car than it had originally, so it will pull away smoothly and then the mid-range performance will be phenomenal. It will far outperform the original car. Just pick up the phone and call me I'll be there Girl, let me show you You're my one and only Like I told you I'll be there You've just seen how tight the package is under the, uh, under the bonnet. So we went through an iterative process of trying to understand which motor was the best one to fit in the car. And we've got a series of different motors available to us. And this was the first one that we looked at. I know it doesn't look much like a motor, but we were trying to mock things up and uh, understand the size of things uh, and do some rapid prototyping to really uh, quickly decide where we got to. So this was the first iteration. This is, uh, doesn't look like it, but it's 700 Newton meters of uh, electric motor. Clearly, uh, when we fitted that in the car, it brought the battery too far forward. We couldn't fit all the batteries that we wanted in. It was probably the ideal motor for the power and the torque that we wanted, but it wasn't, it wasn't the right solution for the car. So we moved on to this. So this is a 120 kilowatt, um, 315 Newton meters of electric motor. This is actually a 3D print of one. This is a motor that we use in quite a lot of our conversions. Uh, AC three-phase motor, uh, relatively small and compact for the uh, amount of power and torque that it outputs. Uh, again, it fits in the car quite well, but the low torque of 315 Newton meters meant that we needed to put a gearbox on the end, which really didn't fit the car, right? The car needs that straight six feeling of power and whilst this would do it, it didn't really seem right to put in the car. So we moved to this. Uh, again, uh, very quick rapid prototype, we tried to make out, make sure that we've got all the control and the cooling parts on it. Um, and this is 660 Newton meters, very different concept of uh, motor, uh, it's actually quite thin as you can see but quite large diameter. Um, so we then went to package that in the car and it's the right motor for the car so we had to make it work. Uh, it's really tight in there still though right so when you actually get this in the car and put it on the center line of the prop shaft we have about 10 mil either side so clearly we were concerned about how we package that. It also had some features that we didn't like with the output for the uh, AC 
uh, or the input for the AC here, cooling pipes on the top, and then an electrical control connection here. So it gave us um, a few issues about packaging it, but we really felt this was the right motor. So we did this. So this is basically the same as what I showed you just now, but this is obviously a fully representative 3D printed parts. But it also takes away a lot of those pieces that you saw with the cooling parts coming out the top uh, and some of the other control, control pieces and actually fits in the vehicle extremely well. I think the big concern that we had was we still only had around 10 to 15 mil across the diameter of the, uh, of the motor to play with to actually fit it in. Clearly uh, still a tight package, even though we've got a fully representative model. Um, so the next step really is to translate all of this into the 3D environment. And we do that through a 3D scan of the vehicle. Uh, luckily enough, uh, I've got another one of these cars, another E-Type Jag. It's a 1963 3.8 uh, and it's over in the other workshop. So let's go get that scanned. The scan is being carried out by Impossible Creations. They collected the data using an N-Scan Pro handheld scanner. This generates a mesh of dots and this data is processed by laying surfaces over those dots. This then makes solid surfaces in CAD. Nick has 3D models of all the components that go into the electric Jaguar. Here you can see the battery modules in the front and rear end of the car. The motor is partially in the transmission housing area with the inverter on the top of the battery pack. The packaging of the parts is very tight, so CAD is used to optimise the positioning with accuracy that would not be possible through trial and error, which means modifications can be done in minutes, including routing the charger and the all-important high-voltage cables. All this will allow Nick to output 3D models and 2D drawings and show customers how it is assembled and to get the parts laser cut and fabricated into physical parts ready for installation. This design should be finished in a couple of weeks, ready to be given out to the manufacturing team. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Alex. How are you? All right, thank you. How good, are you? good. Happy tea? Thank you very much. How's the bike going? Yeah, good. We actually um, we got the engine running two weeks ago. Oh, it, wow. It was, uh, Excellent. Yeah. But we hope we start again this weekend. We only just made sure it was Okay. So it would start, but we have a few issues. So well, I'm, I'm sure talk. we can show people that thing running soon. <laughs> I hope quite so. quite yeah. amazing. But today, I'm going to show you this. That is a 1965 Mini, but it's not a normal Mini. It's a race Mini, and it's going to be the first electric, electric race Mini running in the... Is mini. it a class though, now? Or no, it's going to go into the Libra class, so... Oh, right. Pretty much yeah. bring what you, bring what you built. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, that'd be interesting. So, uh, some kind of hind soles already taken the uh, petrol engine out. It had a 1275 uh, oh, it's a, 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 a series, a series, a series, a series engine. Bit, yeah. Funny enough, the same engine as I had in my Lotus 11. We're going to replace it with um, with an electric motor, <laughs> but I love making foam electric motors. <laughs> right? 315 newton meters. Uh, cool. And 120 kilowatts, so 160 horsepower, something like that. And what RPM does it run at? 12,000 RPM. 12? <laughs> 12,000 RPM. Did it be? Yeah. And the reduction from the motor to the final drive, what have you, what have you got there? Uh, about 6 to 1. So the torque's going to be tremendous. The torque is amazing at the wheel, right? And it's, a, it's, a, it's about getting that balance to try and get the top speed. We, um, <coughs> we went for this ratio so we could get about 120 mile an hour top speed and uh, 0 to 60 in theory of 3.2 seconds. Never. Yeah. Will it really? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're on paper. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, <laughs> trying to get that yeah. traction yeah, that's with, those, yeah. with, with those wheels and tyres. I mean, on slicks, yeah, you might get there, right? Yeah. On, on the track. That'd be good. So it's certainly going to be exciting, isn't it? Yes. We've prototyped this up so we can quickly decide uh, how it fits. Right. This, this, this takes the DC and converts it into AC. Oh right, okay. Right, because yeah. it's an AC motor. And then of course batteries. Look at my battery modules. <laughs> nice and light, these <laughs> ones. Yeah. Um, so we're but thinking... How many, gonna get, how many batteries are you going to have well, in the car? We need 16 in the car. Could be, really. Um, so, but we're thinking 
uh, probably five across the front here. Try and get some real weight over the. So over can the you wheels. package those in areas that you want? Yeah. Than... Uh, the idea is five five across here. Yeah. Maybe six, and then ten or eleven next oh, to right. the driver. Balance okay. the driver right. up. Yeah. Um, but talking talking to the driver, they want it all on the front. You turn into the corner and then lift the rear end. Oh right. And and, and bring the car around. Right. So yeah, I mean, so you've got it, to it's really more batteries than you think in here. Yeah, it, it, it's a different to what we'd actually do on a on a, a car that the customer wants to drive on the road, where we try and replicate the original distribution of weight. So it handles. Of course, yeah. Yeah, but this right. is very much about yeah. how the car turns into the corner, right? Right. That's, that's, okay. that's Liz. Okay. Let's go. Hi Nick, it's Les, yeah. How are you doing? Hi Les, you alright? Yeah Nick, I've been thinking about the cars and yeah, um, yeah. I've made a decision. I, I, I can't touch the uh, the new one at the moment. Okay. So I'm going to go for JWP, I'm going to convert the old one. No problem. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, let's let's book it in, let's, let's get started on it. Cool. Okay, speak to you soon, bye. bye.